So give it up for Robert. All right, well, like, like Jake said, I'm Robert Murphy, and I'm originally from Omaha. Uh, I'm an online campus pastor, which means I'm the pastor of a church that meets online at cccomaha.tv. I sometimes go by the online moniker Ram Hatter, so we may have crossed paths before on Twitter while talking about the show Lost or something else probably less important. So I grew up in Dundee. Uh, this is me in front of my house on Chicago Street. When I was eight years old, my parents divorced, and like many kids who have gone through that, it was a life-altering event. I grew up alone in many respects, so I was often left to my own devices. To cope with the pain and loneliness, I busied myself with sports, video games, and art. And art became my main outlet. Now, this is some of my art from my junior high and high school days. But what I loved about art is it allowed me to try new things with creativity and expression and telling a story. I liked the possibilities and thought, you know, I would study art in college. The summer before my senior year of high school, I was at a leadership camp, and the director asked me what I wanted to do after I graduated. I responded, I'll go to college. He responded, have you ever thought about not going to college? And uh, it was a catalyst for me. And after I graduated, I wondered about my purpose in life, and I prayed a simple prayer. God, I don't care what you want me to do, I'll do it. I just want hope and purpose. So instead of going to college to study art, an opportunity presented itself to do missions and humanitarian work. It was an answer to prayer. I led ministry teams to Mexico. I did some work in Belarus with street kids and orphans. I came back to Omaha and was an intern with Westside Church's student <coughs> ministry, which is why I'm dressed up as an alien robot in that bottom right picture there. <laughs> After my internship, Westside offered me a job to work with their students. And it was a fantastic opportunity, but I sense God's called to be a missionary. This is a picture of the missionary campus headquarters, a former chicken farm in northwest Arkansas. I knew I'd always think, what if, if I took the job at Westside? So I declined the offer, left Omaha, and went to the chicken farm. A majority of my family and friends thought I was a fool. Now at the mission, I was asked to be a part of a theater company that performed a one-act play talking about Jesus and purpose in life. I was on the road for the better part of 18 months. I loved the creativity and sharing about Jesus in this form, and be given the opportunity to share my own story to inspire others. Plus, it was fun to travel all across America. I started doing more communications work at the mission. I saw it as having exponential impact. At the same time, I became licensed and ordained as a pastor. I was mentoring students that would come through our one-year missions program. I realized my pursuits and dreams were a bit different from my coworkers. I cut against the grain of what a missionary was and unintentionally challenged the stereotype. Now, living in the South, pop culture was a no-no with many Christians. Being a known Star Wars fan, one student earnestly said to me, I didn't know you could be a Christian and be a fan of Star Wars the way you are. So when episode one came out, a number of co-workers would covertly ask if it was okay to see the movie. So I would offer to buy them tickets and take them. And I went many times, as you can see. In 2000, I started working in China off and on. I would lead teams on cultural exchanges and work with the underground church. Once, my team was hurried out of the city because the local police wanted to question us about meeting with college-age church leaders. We escaped, but two-thirds of the leaders we met with were put in prison. They knew the risks, but yet still wanted to meet with us. Their faith challenged me. And while I was a missionary, I met my future wife, Jana, and this is the first picture of us. For months, she never acknowledged me, and I thought she was arrogant. <laughs> one, one day, I made a joke to a friend, and she overheard and laughed. I started to get to know her better, and I began to adore her. I found out she liked me all along. We were married seven months after our first date. In 2003, uh, I, I thought God was prodding Jana and I to move on and keep pursuing creative ways to share about Christianity. I considered every place except Omaha because I thought returning to Omaha would be perceived as the safe choice. However, after much prayer and thought, we realized Omaha was the next step. So in 2004, I started attending Christ Community Church and did freelance creative work. I began working for the church, helping them to build their comm team. This led to a full-time job being their art director. I was creating and producing pieces, and it was good. After a while, though, I became restless, and I wanted to do more hands-on ministry. I was beginning to look around, but God checked me on that, thankfully. God told me, before you can do a work, I need to do a work in you. For 10 years, I had struggled with a porn addiction, which I managed to keep a secret. In recovery, I would realize much of the addiction was a coping mechanism with my own childhood experiences. For my sake, for the sake of my family, for the sake of others, I needed to deal with this, or I was going to hurt a lot of people. I thought Jana might divorce me, but she loved and supported me. I took the next year and focused on my family, cutting back on a lot of extra work I was doing. I told my church leadership, and they were gracious and helpful. 
One former leader did tell me I wouldn't move up the ladder by cutting back and focusing on my family. I told them I don't care. I didn't worry about what was next with life and work. Instead, I focused on doing my best for that day. God was doing the work in me. Slowly, I was given more pastoral responsibilities at the church. I was producing more creative pieces than ever before, and I was immersing myself within the creative and entrepreneurial class here in the area. My leaders saw the impact of the work I was doing in and outside the church. They were looking to plant a campus in the suburbs, and I had some discussions about being its pastor. However, I wanted to stay in the city. They asked if I knew anything about this digital church thing. I did, so I put together a proposal why we needed to increase and improve our online presence. The possibilities fascinated me, and the online campus was born. We live stream our services, and I interact with people in the chat. I respond to pastoral and prayer requests like, is it against God to use marijuana in a recreational use? I love that question, because there was no way this person was going to ask that if they were physically at a church. I meet people like Abby, who's in the bottom right. She attends the online campus while being a Peace Corps worker in the Ukraine. We have over 250 people that attend online every week with the services, classes, and other events we stream, like discussions about human trafficking and the relationship between the church and the LGBT community, we've seen over 7,000 people visit. I love being able to connect and talk with people about Jesus, wherever they may be in the world. Going forward, I'm not sure what's in store. Whatever it is, though, will be in line with my current mission statement, creatively and effectively love God, family, Omaha, the world. This is inspired from 1 Corinthians 9. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I might share with them in its blessing. Thanks to everyone for listening. God bless. Okay. Um